Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord just recently fully released and fans of the series are already eagerly awaiting the big total conversion mods. Mods that take Bannerlord's core and create completely new experiences. New maps, new factions, new stories and campaigns and completely new gameplay mechanics. In this video I want to give you guys a preview of what is to come. 20 amazing total conversion mods that are currently in development. Content for hundreds if not thousands of hours of gameplay. The goal is to keep this video as concise as possible and give you all the essential information without causing fatigue from going too much into details. This is but a glimpse of what you can expect from Bannerlord's modding community in the somewhat near future. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting off with one of the most anticipated projects, Kingdoms of Arda. With more than 35 new factions and many known characters and locations from the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, Kingdoms of Arda brings the world of Tolkien to Bannerlord. We will be able to play as Elves, Dwarfs, Orcs, Hobbits, Numenorians, Goblins and Uruks. The mod will have a custom single player campaign, multiplayer and a story mode where you can play through storylines with various characters from Middle-earth, single player or co-op. If you want to learn more about this mod, there is lots of info on the developer's YouTube channel, link is in the video description below. Next we have the Game of Thrones mods. Yes, there is currently not one, but a total of at least three mods that bring George R. R. Martin's famous fantasy world to Bannerlord. Trials of the Seven Kingdoms, Realm of Thrones and A World of Ice and Fire. The mods will have a custom map of Westeros with many known factions, characters and most importantly, there will be dragons. Personally, I can't wait to conquer Westeros with my army of dragons and give them the famous command. Dracarys. Star Wars Separatist Crisis plays during the Clone Wars. The plan is to have one big space map with all the planets on it having their own individual campaign map. The mod will feature 6 unique storylines, 100 diverse planets and tons of equipment. There will be 5 playable factions, Jedi, Sith, Mandalorians, clones and droids. Definitely the most promising Star Wars mod. Bannerlord Online transforms Bannerlord single player game mode into an MMO, whereas all events are fully synchronized and time never stops. You start with absolutely nothing and work your way up to become a powerful lord. There are custom quests, mining, hunting, player economy, a clan system, a reworked workshop system, reworked skill trees and much more. For battles the goal is to make it possible to have clan battles with up to 400 players. Europa at Bellum is set between the late 13th and mid 16th century and aims to create a fictitious medieval world spawning from the Isle of Britain to the deserts of the Holy Land. The mod seems to be very ambitious with large troop trees and a huge amount of armor pieces and weapons. Europa at Bellum will also include a custom version of the Banner Kings mod, which brings things like religion, education, settlement management, a court system, a smithing overhaul and many many more features to the game. Next we have a Japanese themed mod that is set in the 16th century during the age of the country at war. The mod will aim for historical accuracy whenever possible when it comes to weapons, armors, territorial holdings and samurai heraldry. There will be around 20 to 30 factions, custom combat animations and Japanese voice acting. From the cinematic trailer we can already see that this mod is going to have very high quality assets and will look gorgeous. Full Invasion 3 is a PvE co-op mod and a successor of Full Invasion 2, one of Mountain Blade Warband's most popular mods. In Full Invasion 3 players need to work together and fight hordes of AI units, so multiplayer co-op. There will be a progression system in place that allows players to improve their equipment and class over the course of a game. The Old Realms is a total conversion mod that aims to transform the world of Calradia into that of the old world of Warhammer Fantasy. The mod is set in the age of Karl Franz's ascension to the throne. The overall end goal 
is to recreate the entirety of the old world within Bannerlord, ensuring all factions and locations are lore accurate and immersive while maintaining the sandbox element of the base game. CRPG is a multiplayer mod that adds persistency to Bannerlord's multiplayer game modes. The first iteration will feature battles that give gold and experience and players have the ability to manage their characters, stats and equipment. So you can buy weapons and armor and build up your character. Furthermore, there is also the intention to add a multiplayer campaign on top of that. Sword and Musket is a single player and multiplayer mod that is set during the French Revolution, Revolutionary Wars and Napoleonic Wars. Basically a successor to the highly popular Napoleonic Wars DLC for Mountain Blade Warband. Currently their focus lies on developing the multiplayer, which has priority. The mod will have high emphasis on historical accuracy, so if you want to be part of the French invasion of Russia, the famous Battle of Waterloo or other battles across Europe from that time period, this mod will make it possible. Burning Empires is a historical total conversion mod set in the late Roman period. Planned features are a large campaign map that will extend from Britannia to the Caspian Sea, 24 major starting factions and 20 minor factions, historical lords for every faction, historical accurate equipment, a religion system, the reconstruction of ancient cities and wonders of the world, sea travel and unique skill perks for every faction. The mod will also feature a historical campaign mode following the journey of famous historical characters with unique quests and stories. In the name of Jerusalem 2 plays in the Near East of the late 12th century. The campaign starts in the year 1187 and will include scripted events until the fall of Constantinople and its immediate aftermath. Compared to its warband predecessor, In the Name of Jerusalem 2 will strive for more historical accuracy in terms of weapons, armors, characters, heraldry and settlements. Another upcoming fantasy mod is The Wheel of Time, which is based on a series of high fantasy novels and also got a TV series adaption in 2021. The mod will feature a custom campaign with all nations of the Wheel of Time universe and tons of custom armor and weapon models. There will also be magic spells in form of the One Power. The L'Arte della Guerra takes place in the late 15th and early 16th century Europe and Middle East, where players will be able to participate in wars like the War of the Roses, the Thirteen Years' War, the Burgundian Wars, the Italian Wars and many other conflicts, or even start a new one. It is planned to have a large and detailed map of Europe and the Middle East, historical accurate troops, titles and heraldry, gunpowder weapons and field artillery, and up to 45 playable factions. Britwalda is another mod that strives for historical accuracy. Set in the 9th century of England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Norway and Denmark, Britwalda will include a naval combat system that allows for fully functional ship versus ship battles. You can interact with parties on the high seas, purchase new ships and also do coastal raids. Three Kingdoms is a semi-fictional mod set in the year 194 in ancient China. It will feature a custom map with nine factions of the Three Kingdoms period. The mod will include many known characters from that period and will also feature reworked character models and custom game music and audio. Eagle Rising plays in ancient Calradia, a time of great turmoil and change. There will be 10 factions that have armor and equipment based on historical cultures like a Roman themed faction, a Celtic themed faction, a Spartan themed faction and so on. Besides having this fantasy setting, there is also the plan to make a historical accurate submod with all the assets they create for this project. And last but not least, we have Land of Sika, a fantasy mod that features a brand new storyline with 8 main factions and many minor factions. The mod lets you build your own settlement anywhere and establish your village and you can even upgrade it to a castle or a town. So, these were 20 of the most promising mods that will come to Bannerlord. Obviously there is more than that more than I could reasonably show in one video. 
Now to the question that probably everyone has at this point. When can we play these mods? Well, some of them you could play now. But I don't want to create any fake hype here. I have tried several of them, and while we get a basic understanding where they are trying to go with the project, there is not a single mod on this list where I thought, yeah, this is a finished product. Currently, almost none of them work with the release version of Bannerlord, and you would have to downgrade to a beta version of the game and install it manually or via some third-party software, just to experience some unfinished alpha versions that are missing tons of features and give a bad impression of the mod. Also keep in mind that most people work completely unpaid on these mods, so we always have to expect that projects will get delayed or even cancelled, and also new ones will start being developed. Once these mods are more fleshed out and close to complete, I will make more in-depth showcases and reviews. Definitely let me know in the comments which mods are you looking forward to the most. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please leave a like and make sure to subscribe to not miss out on future content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.